How's it going guys? We're going to look at the adapter pattern today here on Code Tech Tutorials. My name is Matt and uh, if you've seen the previous facade episode, it's a lot like that. Essentially, we just take something and we kind of conform it to a new interface. The big difference here with adapter though is that this new interface uh, is adapted to match some required interface and that's about it. So I'm going to do a kind of a silly example here in our code and uh, that hopefully clears up for people so let's jump over to the code shall we here we go so i made a new folder over here and uh i'm gonna put it to my usual side uh yeah just an adapter folder and added it to the cmake and all that stuff uh so you'll see that but i haven't really updated this one too much yet looks like it's got the main i've got adapter I've got this whole class here, but it's not really... I'm going to kind of uh, do a, a new, a fresh example here. So I'm going to delete all that, but... Uh, and we'll delete all this. Say, say you have an interface. We'll say the interface or the thing you want is a cheeseburger. You want a cheeseburger, man. It's got to have cheese on it. Burger. However, you're working with uh, some sort of thing that only makes hamburgers so uh you don't want to have to like reinvent the wheel or redo the bun and the meat and all that stuff so you just want to reuse the hamburger but add cheese to it and that's how it would fit your design so let's type up a few things here let's first make a struct of a uh, hamburger but how are we going to represent this in data so uh we could just do we could do strings ah, forget strings you know strings are uh Sure, strings are very detailed. You can say lots of stuff, but we're just gonna put has like bull has uh, has bun um, pickle. Yeah, pickle's good. Has, has pickle. What else do they have? Has uh, ketchup. Why do I suddenly not know how to spell ketchup? All right, but notice that there's no option for cheese here. Well, we could default the base ones to true and make you have to construct the rest as as needed. False. False. And then maybe you have an interface for this struct that is something like, uh, well, let's make a quick interface here. Make a deleter here. Make this destructor equal default. And then we also probably want in here something to wrap a hamburger uh, or something like that. So we're going to have it return a hamburger um, and just say make burger. Now we'll just like return a, a hamburger or I guess we could go something like uh, hamburger and you know we probably want to take in different options here for how they want it but i'm kind of skipping that for um simplicity reasons but naturally it, you would need the details about what they want on it so you probably pass that all in here like like a bunch of pools like uh pickle question you know something like that has pickle uh, extra pickle whatever whatever your options are or maybe you'll just you know whatever you decide to do is fine but we're not going to worry about that because it'll just uh, take too much time. And it's not super relevant to the rest of the example that I'm going to show you. So then we would just return this burger. This is not super efficient code. Uh, you're going to notice that there's going to be a lot of copying and stuff, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So basically we can make do a make burger and it's going to return us the hamburger in its default state. All right, but what if... They want a cheeseburger and you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel so instead you just go okay well let's just make a cheeseburger version and this would be like a cheeseburger adapter really a cheeseburger just has cheese that's that's the only difference so there's a couple different things you could do here uh for example uh within our class privately we could go uh struct cheeseburger carrots from uh, hamburger except it also has cheese and we'll just set that to true and by default you know just like so boom so we got another struct of cheeseburger now uh obviously they probably want access to this so maybe we put this outside of it something like that uh, but uh it just depends on your your program but essentially this cheeseburger maker is going to be the same thing as the hamburger maker except it's also just going to add cheese but you know there's always going to be that person that says yeah i'd like a cheeseburger without cheese please and you come over the intercom and and say you mean a hamburger and they're like no 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 i wanted a cheeseburger i just don't want the cheese and you're like that's a hamburger no i want to cheat you know people people are not too bright out there in the public sometimes uh so anyway make what you know of that uh it's kind of besides the point but the point is sometimes you got to make a cheeseburger 
and set the has cheese to false because people are adamant that they want to be charged more for a hamburger. So it is what it is. So we got a couple different ways of doing this. One of the ways we can do this is we can make a private variable uh, of this hamburger maker. So private here, we can go uh, hamburger maker. Essentially, uh, you can make a constructor here on cheeseburger maker that takes a hamburger maker. So that way you could make the hamburger, you could pass it into here, and this thing would do the thing with it. You could go hamburger equals, you could do something like that. And you could set it and have it own this new memory and, and uh, you basically got the hamburger maker. So then when you call make burger from this one, you don't want to re return that. You want to turn a cheeseburger instead of a hamburger. All right. So this one, we're going to make a different function. We're going to call make burger and we're going to return, well, a cheeseburger, not but the cheeseburger is just a hamburger so we would just go okay let's make this cheeseburger uh c burger and that would be it really actually in this case i mean if we're not handling passing in the ingredients like we should be just to save time uh, once again then this would be enough because essentially we get everything on the hamburger and we also add that cheese so it'd be a beautiful thing and this would all be all you need to adapt your hamburger into a cheeseburger Let's make a little main here and uh, we'll just include, or let's see here, how are we going to do this? Uh, we'll first start out with a cheeseburger, so, or a hamburger. So say you want a hamburger, we'll just call it the beach burger, H underscore. And we're going to make this one. Well, first of all, we need a hamburger maker, HB maker. And we'll call uh, HB maker dot make burger. You know, that's going to return a hamburger. So this would set this one accurately. And there you go, got your hamburger. So yeah, that's fine. But now what if you get uh, something that wants the cheeseburger? This is where you need to adapt that hamburger and not reinvent everything just because a uh, new sandwich. So, um, so say you need a cheeseburger this time. Of course, you can't just call hamburger maker because you're going to get the wrong type and it's not going to work exactly as you require. Uh, I'll pick the same this one, Seaburger. So instead, you're going to need the adapted class that you made, which is this Cheeseburger Maker. That's the adapted class, uh, CB Maker. And this one, you're just going to go CB Maker dot make burger. And there's our little adapted version. Berg. Typos. Uh, what doesn't it like about this? No default constructor exists. Okay, so we got to take a look at that real quick. Uh, this is true. There is no default constructor, so we got to think about that a little bit. This one, it wants a hamburger to start. Now, this doesn't actually really make any sense because we don't actually do anything with this, so maybe it'd make more sense to do something like... Uh, we'd have to use this constructor, first of all, so we'll fix that in a second. But then, instead of just directly making a cheeseburger, first... Well, we make the hamburger, so whatever the ingredients are on that is would be the idea, because this hamburger maker would, in theory, be taking in uh, some ingredients there. But once again, we're kind of skipping over that. So this would basically say, you already made the hamburger, just add the cheese, and that kind of thing. That makes sense. So uh, we go hamburger dot make, make the burger, and that would be a hamburger. But we could also say, we could also cast this to a cheeseburger. I'm making this way too confusing. Let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. So if we make the burger and return it, we're not going to get a cheeseburger, but we could go static cast cheeseburger, whatever it makes. And we could return the C burger. So if we static cast it, we should have the cheese. Now this is uh, maybe a little advanced here because of the static casting, but essentially because of this whole inheritance structure right here, we could call a cheeseburger a hamburger. And that's why this static cast would work. It would basically say, okay, we're making a hamburger, but we're going to call it a cheeseburger. And that should construct it with this has cheese true uh, on there, and then we just return it. So in that case, we are using this original hamburger uh, here, or the hamburger maker. All right, let's go back to our main... And now we got this cheeseburger maker, but now we need to pass in a ham and look at my cheeseburger maker again. It wants a hamburger maker. Uh, it wants the maker. It doesn't want the actual hamburger. So that's sort of interesting. Maybe we actually want, not the maker, but 
the hamburger. I don't know. And I guess you could go either way. But basically, we want the HP maker here. And we don't even want to make this burger necessarily. Um, and then that, and then this reference should work because it's the right type now. It was the wrong type before. And uh, there we go. So we've got this hamburger maker and we've adapted it to a cheeseburger maker like so. And then we should get, uh, let's just make sure it has cheese because that's, that's the big thing. Uh, has cheese. And we go see burger. Dot. Okay, so let's see if this cheeseburger actually has cheese. I think it would. I'm going to put this into uh, release. Probably should have been doing this before. Unless you need to step through the code, you probably want to be in release in general. So there we go. We should get our new one up here for adapter. There it is. And let's just see if it says as cheese. As cheese true. Very good. That means it's working as intended. So that is one way of doing it. That is, uh, you know, basically you would follow this sort of pattern. You know, basically you already have an interface, but it doesn't work for what you're trying to do. So you need to adapt it. Something like this an adaption. There's a lot of other examples. This is used extremely commonly. People do sort of this sort of stuff all the time. Sometimes they don't even realize what it's called. They're just kind of doing it because that's how they get it to work. So if you're basically adapting something to get it to work with a new class or, or something like that, it's an adapter, hence the word. So I, I want to reiterate that this is not the only way of doing it. If you do a Google search for like exact adapter examples in C++, you'll find a bunch of others. I just wanted to come up with something on my own. Uh, that way I'm not copying from the internet too much, but the reality of these patterns is they are very well known and very well, uh, I don't know, instructed, I guess. So it's not, I'm not, there's no way for me to reinvent the wheel or say that I, I'm the one who created this or anything like this. It's just something that's been around for ages and ages. And I uh, hope that makes sense and helps you understand the basic concept of what an adapter is. Obviously in real code, you're not going to be doing cheeseburger, hamburger stuff. You'll be doing like, um, I don't know, do, does this does this matrix need to be in column major or row major form and stuff like that? So it's going to be, of course, a little more mathematical. But you could uh, make an adapter for that. If you've got something that's bringing, some library that's bringing in matrices in the wrong form, you could make an adapter for it and change it to the correct form and stuff like that for literally anything. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.